Hello and welcome back to Enterprise Linux Security. This time we are recording live. How you doing, Zhao? All good. It's always a pleasure to be here with you. And uh, <laughs> as Murphy would say, get ready for some fun because something's going to break. I My cat has been it. eyeing me weirdly for a while now, so he might jump in front of the camera. You know, it's funny because when we record these, there's there's so many things that people never see that we edit out, like my lights just shutting off and then the computer going on suspend or something. And then I have to, you know, quickly get everything back up and running and then edit the content afterwards. So, yeah, there's I, I hope not, but you're probably right. There's probably going to be something that'll happen because that's just the way of uh, live streaming, I guess. Yeah. Um. Yeah, as you can see from the, the title up there, we're going to be talking about password managers, everybody's favorite piece of, of software where they keep all of their trusted secrets and then, well, you guessed it, they're out in the open. Um, yeah. <laughs> LastPass has been having a pretty rough time lately, huh? They, they really have, and it's, it's almost like a no-win situation because does anybody like passwords like... Does anyone say, like, I can't wait to enter a password because it's so much fun, right? I don't think anybody likes passwords. I think we just kind of put up with them until we, you know, have something that takes over. So LastPass is keeping control, or at least it should be helping you keep control over the passwords that you really truly want nothing to do with. But that's only as good as the platform. If they're not a good steward of your personal information, then... Um, that's a big concern. And when it, when it comes to passwords, there's no room for failure. Oh, absolutely not. And just for some background, we're using the same thing that was used by the Romans. <laughs> they had passwords to be accepted by other people that they never met. They just spoke the password and they would be accepted and identified as somebody who belonged to the same legion or the same group or whatever. And we're still using passwords today. That should give people some pause about it. So, yeah, especially in IT, I feel that advances so quickly and we still haven't figured out something better than this. I think we have, but it's just the adoption issue because I think people in general are all about the status quo to the point where there could be a better solution, but it also represents change. So for a lot of people, they would rather just keep things the way they are even if the current way is really not all that good because change gives people anxiety. And that's, I think, why a lot of these things just really take a long time to, to catch on, if they do at all. I mean, look at the Linux desktop. If people didn't have a fear of change, it would probably be on equal footing as far as Mac OS and Windows. But, you know, no, nobody, the average person doesn't change the operating system on their computer. And that's something that um, yeah. plays into this because status quo, they just keep it the same. That's the way it is. That's the way it's going to be. And that's not going to lend its, itself well to, you know, change and innovation. And the same thing can be said about password managers. Exactly. Like, we, like I mentioned, LastPass. People are still using LastPass. I'm yep. not going to gonna bash them too much about it because anybody can be hacked. It's not on your control. Nobody would right. is hacked because they want to be hacked. Um, but I mean, this is like the, the seventh, eighth time they're hacked in the past couple of years. And each time they come out with some changes that they implement and some stuff that they are going to do differently that's going to protect them and everything's going to be right. fine. Um, but some of the changes that they mention, like using separate development systems and all of that, it makes you wonder why the hell weren't they doing that before? Why wasn't that something that was done from day zero? Right. If you're going to be handling sensitive information like password information, why are you not taking those steps from the start? That's like basic. All the extras, all the, the added features come on top of that. You should have started from that baseline. Yep. I, I mean, I've known security companies that, and I don't think I'm allowed to say what company this is, where they have security down to they only allow a specific distribution of a specific version on people's computers, specific computers in general, with a very specific way that, you know, all these hoops you have to jump through just to, you know, develop and do your job, which is doing it right. I mean, they, they scrutinize every detail. So I almost wish I could say the name of the company because I feel like they're doing it, you know, doing it right because they, they take it to that level. But then LastPass, um, well, I, I guess we should probably talk about what exactly happened here, right? So, um, 
obviously last pass has been in the news for a long time and i don't think i could summarize everything that's happened up till now because there's been a lot but the the summary that i'm going to give you or, or mention here is that some information was stolen but apparently not the passwords themselves like like you have to have like there's a master password and obviously you have to know that password to unlock the um, actual database to, to see the password so basically your passwords are going to be an encrypted blob and without that master password nobody can see that but there's going to be some things that are not encrypted like websites that you visit so if you have a you know gmail.com in the url field um, that doesn't mean that the uh, threat actors have your password but they do know that you have a gmail account so if there's anything specific to gmail that they want to use for phishing um, they can do that because they're getting information about what you use that would help them target phishing attacks better there's no evidence yet, and I don't even know if it's possible that the you know actual password databases were locked. So some people are of the mindset, yeah, it sucks that the personal information got leaked, but my passwords are still safe. But then my mindset is, well, everything's safe until it's not. And if someone isn't a good steward of their information and they're constantly having problems, then you know, that's a big red flag. But at the same time, and I think this is going to be part of the discussion, when a company does suffer a breach, there's something like a kick me sign that's put on their back because now someone got in. Now everybody is going to be trying to get in and break into that company because someone was successful. So they know it's possible. And now everybody's going to try. So you could have a situation where a company's in the news because they constantly fail over and over again, or they're just, you know, being unfairly targeted by pretty much everybody because they're always in the news. I'm not sure where this lands here. I think it's a combination of both, but that's part of the topic. Should you trust password managers? And that's uh, what we're going to be discussing. And that's basically the gist of it, isn't it? Password managers, specifically this type of companies, they live and die by the trust that they earn from their customers. The moment they stop having their customers trust, they're going to lose their business and it's going to go right. down the drain because people will not trust them to securely hold their passwords, obviously. But what you said there, there there's quite a few things that I would like to address on that. First, uh, regarding the, the password field being encrypted. Um, they did not require you to have a strong password to begin with. I believe the, the minimum character length that you would have would be eight. And if your experience is as good as mine, people will just do the bare minimum to get by that login password and that uh, that screen and carry on with their with what they're going to do. So they're going to get the, the simplest password that they can remember and that will fill the requirements that they have to. Um, so yeah, the password field is encrypted, but cracking an eight character password is like a couple of minutes with today's hardware. And I'm talking right. about the, the kind of hardware that you can have at home. Um, if you're looking at, um, at groups targeting this information, at people with the resources, at uh, intelligence agencies and all of that, that's probably already broken by now. So <laughs> your passwords are out there. Right. Um, then there's a bit more. What you mentioned there about people knowing that you have a Gmail account and probably seeing the email account, which is the login field. Imagine that in an, in an enterprise setting where you, the, the stuff that was visible in the last pass dump is the list of systems within your company's uh, enterprise systems that you have access to. So basically you're giving the, an attacker the list of systems that they're gonna try next. It's not just a matter of your personal stuff. When you're looking at the enterprise side of things, this type of breach is much more egregious. It's much more dangerous. Um, the amount of information, even if you don't have the password itself, it's much more damning. And uh, LastPass right. still hasn't come out and said that it was definitively secure. Right, right. And, and how they communicate the issue in my opinion, is going to impact my trust more than anything. If a company waits too long to let people know that there is a problem, that's a huge red flag because that comes across to me as irresponsible. Um, and I know it might seem strange because obviously the worst thing that could happen is your data getting out there, but it's even worse when a company doesn't tell anybody and then their identity is probably already stolen and they don't even know there's a problem until months later or they get their credit report. Um, it, it's it's very important that the that, that companies that you know 
are stewards of your information like this are doing a good job, but that in and of itself, I guess, isn't enough to uh, have them do all the, I hate to say best practices or whatever word we want to use, but it's it, it's alarming. And I don't mind, my, my mentality is if there's one breach, I could probably forgive it depending on the nature of that breach and how bad it was. But if it keeps happening, then it becomes harder and harder for me to look the other way. Obviously, I can't look the other way. I have to report on everything that happens. But when it comes to my personal use, okay, one breach, not the worst breach. It keeps happening. I'm done. Um, and that's a big problem. Although I wasn't a LastPass customer when this happened, I switched off of that. I'll get to that later, what I use now. But I, I stopped using that a long time ago. And the only reason I stopped using it, this is before any breach, because it made my browser slow. Like having that LastPass add-on, it scans everything on your browser, which takes CPU, makes the scrolling sluggish, and it just made Firefox like a like a, just a slog. And that was why I stopped using it. Um, but I guess now um, I'm especially glad I stopped using it. What you mentioned there is probably the best reason to actually go to a password manager. Right. I mean, up, up to a point you can manage your passwords, you'll either remember them or you'll have this formula in your head that you, that will let you recreate the password, say, if I use the initials of the website or something like that, and a combination of something else, and I'll be able to go back. And as long as you know the algorithm that you use, you don't actually have to remember each and every password. If you have to remember one, you'll recreate it in your head. Um, up to some point, that's feasible. The thing here is that when you start talking about password managers for a team, for an enterprise setting where you have to share passwords or you have to let your users have a centralized way of keeping their passwords secure. And you want to take that responsibility away from the users because who knows what their security measures are. And you want to take that into the company's purview. And you want to have the company provide a system for the users to, to store their passwords in. Um, then it gets unavoidable. You have to have some form of password manager. You have to have some form of system where you keep track of this information. Um, and again, that's where the trust and the breaking of that trust really, really matters. Because if a breach like this happens and you have enterprise customers, those enterprise customers are out the window. And you'll probably get lawsuits as well. So it's right. not just the stuff that comes out. It's not just the breach information and the news and all of that gives you bad press. It's also the customers that you are losing immediately after something like this. It's really, really right. bad from a business point of view. It really is. What, what is your opinion on whether or not people should uh, continue using LastPass? Have they said anything that inspires any confidence at this point? Should people just mass like bail on this? Or what are your thoughts on that? I don't want to be too too nasty on last pass. Well, I mean, you just speak. I mean, just speak your mind. I mean, we could we could speak our mind and be polite. I think it's just one of those things where you know it's just an opinion, and I'll, and I'll share mine as well. Again, just an opinion, just my personal opinion. This doesn't matter to my company or anything like that. This is just my personal opinion. But it's not the first time, or the second, or the third, or the fourth time that they have issues. Um, and it's not just the, the, the having issues. Like I said at the start, anybody can get hacked. It's not under your control. Nobody does it on purpose. Everybody tries to avoid it if they can. But more than the hacks themselves, more than the number of times they've been breached, it's like I said at the start, the things that they claim to have started improving and the, the changes that they started to do after each of the breaches makes me think that it's things that should have been there from the start and are not. And the foundation on which the, the whole infrastructure of LastPass is built on top of is not very secure. Um, and every change that you're going to do now on the infrastructure that's already in place, it's like patching something that is beyond patching. So, right. yeah, I would take it with a really, really large grain of salt if I was considering LastPass. Well, I think it's important for everyone to just, you know, make a decision for themselves. If you, if you don't have a password manager yet, then even before this, the best thing to do is just look at all the solutions and find the one that checks all your boxes and also that you can trust. But in this situation, my opinion might be a little bit different if LastPass was the only password manager, where if you wanted a password manager, LastPass is the only place to get one. 
then it's a question of password manager or not a password manager. And I might even lean towards, you know, if it's true that that the passwords haven't been um, exposed, the encrypted passwords, then it's fine. But the reality of the, of the situation is there's a bunch of alternatives. There's many different password managers out there. And I don't feel personally, because I've used LastPass, that there's any feature or anything in LastPass that stands above anything else. In fact, I would argue that other password managers have more features and um, some things that really get me excited, even though passwords aren't exciting. So we have this big ecosystem. And in my opinion, there's just no reason to stick with a company that has shown issues like this when there's so many alternatives out there and you'll probably have a better experience. But even if there weren't, um, it, it's at least cause for alarm. My personal opinion is to step away from LastPass. And I'm not saying that as in like an against LastPass as a company mindset. This is not personal towards LastPass at all. I'm not, you know, being judgmental there. It's just, you may as well use a password manager that has less drama. That this is, it could be as simple as that. You know, why use something that is in the news for something negative? But then the other thing to keep in mind is if you switch to something else, that they could also have the same problem at some point. So you have to be prepared to move again if the service that you move to also has a problem, which can happen. No company is immune to this. It can happen to anyone, like you said. So you have to, so my recommendation is move away from it, but also be prepared to do that again if that unfortunately happens in the future again. That's some pretty interesting advice there, um, because the the thing with with password managers and online password managers are at that like LastPass, mm -hmm. they're juicy targets. They're some of the most interesting targets for a hacker to go after, and not necessarily just for the passwords alone. I mean, if you go to Have I Been Pound, you have tons of password dumps out there. You probably already have the passwords that you're looking for. You're just looking for the context, for the systems where those passwords apply, so that you don't have to test them against every target. Right. Um, something like LastPass, where only the password field was encrypted, and information like the website, like the system name, IP address, your name, your address, something like that. Um, and I'm not even going into payment details or something like that. I don't even, not even considering that. Um, the context that they get from getting the information that LastPass has is enough when used in conjunction with the dump for the password that we know have been done throughout the years and that we know are available on darknet forums. Um, so, yeah, it's a really good target for hackers. Right. When you move to a different system, again reputation trust but be prepared to, like you said to to pack up and move to one, to the next one or just go to something on premises um, i'm one of those get off my lawn kind of guys that's that doesn't really want to go to the cloud and all of that and if i can have a solution in house i will have a solution in house and some people in the in the chat have been talking about bitwarden i did some looking into bitwarden before before this mm -hmm. obviously um, and we'll get into some of their features and all of that because they're a pretty interesting alternative as well. And they let you have an installation on premises and they have instructions on how to set up on Docker and all of that. That said, they have it available and you can move to on premises, but the whole process, even though they provide you with a script that uh, creates the, all infra the infrastructure, you end up with 12 containers just to provide the Bitwarden service. That's a lot of stuff that can go wrong that has to be maintained that has a lot of moving parts there. Right. I like that it's on premises, but again, you'll probably need somebody to keep an eye on that as well. And so you're just compounding the issue as well. You'll move to on premises, you'll get your target in house, you'll probably be able to take better care of it or protect it more as you like and restrict all access to all of that. But there's a lot of stuff to keep in order. There's a lot of stuff to make sure that doesn't break it. And there's a lot of stuff that when it breaks, you need pretty good knowledge about their stack to be able to fix by yourself. Um, so even though it's available, it's not just trivial to set it up. Right, right. I completely agree. And for me, um, I use Bitwarden. That that's my solution currently. One of them, actually. I I use two. I'll get to that in a minute. But um, 
Hosting it myself was never something I was considering because the mindset I have is, you know, their 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 service could be very secure. Their Docker containers could be awesome. You know, I'm a klutz. I'm not, I'm not going to tell anyone that I have perfect security or I'm immune myself because I'm human. I make mistakes. And if I'm hosting it myself, chances are, I mean, I could do something wrong. I don't know. I just don't want to host anything myself or even just maintain something because of the amount of time it takes and how busy I am typically is just, I don't have time to do that. So that wasn't an option for me, but I know a lot of people do host it themselves and they seem to have a good experience with that. Although I can't speak personally to that experience of hosting it yourself because I haven't done that, but I do use Bitwarden you know, daily. So as a service in general, I, I do have an opinion on it, which we'll get to, but yeah, you, you could host it yourself if you'd like. The average person probably would never want to do that. Home lab people absolutely would have no problem with that at all. System administrators, no problem. The average person, the only way they're going to host it themselves is if they paid their friend to, to help them with it or something, if that if they're not technical themselves. And so that's it exists, but I, I just have a feeling the footprint is going to be a lot smaller on that. I, I was considering this for an enterprise deployment. Um for the enterprise environment, there are lots of moving variables and moving parts that have to work together with the password manager at that point. You have your identity management, you have your authorization, you have your multi-factor authentication, everything has to plug into this. Um, you're adding a new stack, a new application stack to your existing infrastructure just to support password manager. And again, this is the convenience versus security argument. Keeping it online has all the issues that we've discussed so far. Keeping it on premises increases your complexity and increases your amount of work and probably you're going to have to have some type of resource just affected to that. Somebody is going to have to yeah. keep an eye on that 24-7. Um, it's a trade-off that you need to consider. If your enterprise is large enough to consider something like this, then it's probably a better option to have that on premises than on the cloud. This is a type of information that should never leave your, your premises, if possible. Right. Again, right. Totally agree. convenience versus security. If you don't have the know-how, if you don't have the people, the right people for the job, then move it to the cloud. We've been talking about LastPass and how they, they've obviously been hacked so many times. Others have as well. But there are lots of password managers out there. Not all of them have been hacked. Some of them have and have taken better measures than LastPass, um, you'll have to do a lot of digging if you want to find the right one for you because the right one for you is not the right one for the next guy over. Um, this is very environment dependent. There are lots of things that need to that you need to consider here. Um, again, an interesting feature that I consider to be pretty useful on a password manager like this is the type of have I been pound built in. Um, there are a couple of services that have this. They will alert you if there is a breach that involves one of your passwords. Even if they don't know the password, they know that it, you're registered to that website and they know your username, so they know that you're included in the dump and you will receive an alert. That's pretty useful. So mm -hmm. when something goes wrong, you'll probably learn fast enough that will let you change that password before it's used. Then stuff like multi-factor authentication integration, that's also pretty good. Not all of them support it. Um, right. Integration with your identity management systems, that's also pretty interesting if you're in, a, in an enterprise system. The last thing you want to do is add another place where you need to create user accounts and control their life cycle and remove them when the users go away from the company. So you want to have that centralized in your identity management service and then you, the password manager can accept that user and can create passwords for it if that's the case. But they have to be able to talk to each other and you have to be able to automate that. Um, don't just start adding complexity to your environment. You already are busy en enough with the stuff that you need to be doing to add more stuff that you need to do. That's a very good point. And so when it comes to alternatives, um, this has come up in the chat room a number of times, so I, I need to mention this. Uh, KeePass. I use KeePass XC a lot, and one of the cool things about that is it, it's offline. You you have to maintain... I mean, it doesn't sync itself from one machine to the next. You have to architect that yourself if you want that. 
Um, so, for example, what I do with KeePass XC is I have it attached to a sync thing, um, sync service that I maintain here locally. And that sync service is not accessible outside. I, I block that at the firewall because sync thing does have the ability to sync from wherever you are. You could be at a coffee shop and then your computer syncing to, um, you know, your main sync thing node or whatever it is, even if it's in your home network. I don't allow that. I don't want that. I don't want anything syncing outside the network. I can wait until I get to the office to sync up to my file server. I don't have to do that from remote. So, it, so if you do that wrong, you could open yourself up to some, you know, problems if you have that exposed and it's syncing and some kind of weakness. I'm not aware of any KeePass XC weaknesses. Don't get me wrong, but you know, by design, it's it's offline. If there's a password database, it could be in your documents folder, maybe in a you know Google Drive or something. And there's also plugins for browsers that allow you to autofill passwords in the browsers from KeePass XC, even though it's offline. Um, there's even, uh, and this is my favorite feature of KeePass XC, and I don't know if a lot of people realize that it could do this. You could autofill passwords in non-browser apps. So for example, if I bring up Steam and Steam times out and wants me to log in, there's gonna be a shortcut where based on the window title, of the application window, it'll fill in the password for you, even though it's not a um, actual website, it's just an app. I like that feature a lot. So there's a lot to say about KeePass XC. I think it's really good, but it's not for the average person. I don't, I mean, it's probably fine for intermediate people and, and higher, but you have to architect, you know, the underneath or if it syncs or not and things like that. So it's not quite the easiest, but it's also not difficult either. That thing that you just brought up is actually one of the things that you need to consider it as well on the enterprise. Does it mean that you have to train your users to, to use the password manager? Does it require training? Does it require training for your staff to be able to maintain it, to administer it? Um, all of those are considerations that you need to take into account when you're comparing some, a solution like this. If you're deploying to 1,000 users, 2,000 users, 10,000 users, Will they require training? Will you have to set up training sessions for them? Will you have the ability to learn the information so that you can pass it on? Will there be trainers available? Is the information available online? All of those are concerns that, that need to be taken into account when you're comparing solutions like this. If you're just doing it for yourself and it fails, okay, you move to the next one. You're, you're not able to figure it out, okay, try another one. If it means that 10,000 people won't be able to log into the company systems because they can't figure out the, the password manager, then you have a problem and your company has a problem. Um, so all of those are things that need to be taken into account. I completely agree. I, I don't personally see KeePass XC taking off as a um, company-wide solution personally because of you know the varying levels of experience you'll have from one employee to the next. Um, no one comes from the same worldview or the same background. But what I have seen with several organizations is that everybody on the IT team will use KeePass XC, but only them. A company-wide solution is something else that they might maintain, but they just um, have everything in KeePass XC. And I'm not saying anybody should do this, but I did see one company I worked with was literally putting the KeePass database in Git. And I have no idea why they decided to do that, but um, and, and how Git is going to work with an encrypted database, but literally you'd see Slack messages. I just updated KeePass, you know, do a Git pull, um, you know, broadcasting to everybody in Slack, and I'm just sitting there thinking like, this is, a de this is just a debacle, honestly. So there could be scaling issues too, but what I have seen, like I said, is IT people using it, and then you know the rest of the employees not using it. So that probably misses the mark. You want the rest of the users to keep their passwords secure as well. Yep. <laughs> and you need a solution the for them. Yep. And that's the thing. You need a solution that's easy enough for the regular user to, to rely on and to use rather than, as I mentioned in the chat, just use post-it notes on your monitor. If people remember from a couple of years back, the password for the Hawaii emergency system was on screen on a monitor somewhere and it was hacked because it was shown on a news piece somewhere. I digress. Um, you want the average user to rely on the system that you provide them or that they are able to install themselves. And you want a unified solution so that your support team doesn't have to deal with 10 different systems. So. <laughs> There's this trade-off again, usability versus security. You want something that gives you all the functionality that you require, that keeps your data encrypted, that doesn't uh, ask for exp 
for additional information that you don't want to give them that doesn't require you to pay through the nose to get it and also is easy enough to use to the regular user and that that combination can be tricky to get right it depends a lot on the level of your users if they are very technical or not um, because like you said everybody comes from different backgrounds everybody has different exper um, different experiences in IT but at the same time different industries will attract different types of, um, of workers and of right. people uh, people in more tech related fields will tend to be able to figure some stuff more than people in other fields and this is not universal this is not always true and we've covered in the past some news about people getting hacked by doing the most absurd stuff and they work on it related uh, industries as well um, but it tends to be that way um, again this is this is probably why we don't recommend a specific solution and we tend to do this a lot in the podcast we'll talk about technologies and all that without recommending a specific solution because all of the solutions that are available depend on your environment we do not know your environment we do right. not know which tool is the best tool for your needs um, we can only give you a glimpse of the things that you need to worry about because we already went through those and we <laughs> It's either right. stuff that we got wrong when we were doing them ourselves, or it's things that we are considering ourselves when we are looking into ty this type of solutions. But there's a bit more to just keeping your data secure and being able to to be deployed as a browser extension or something like that to work in your favorite websites. There's a whole lot more around password managers. Um, this right. is just the tip of the iceberg. Another issue why we don't recommend specific solutions is because a podcast like ours is basically eternal because, you know, years down the line, someone could be going back and listening through all the episodes to learn different things. We have a lot of foundational episodes. So what if, you know, hypothetically, our podcast existed before LastPass had anything wrong at all? And, and maybe at the time we loved it. I, I don't think I've ever really loved LastPass, but... <laughs> Even if we did, right, and we thought it was the best thing, and it was at the time, and we were recommending it, then nowadays people would still be listening to that episode even after all this happens, and then there might be people using it based on our earlier recommendation, even if we don't recommend it anymore. And I never wanted to be on, you know, in that trap, because you know, like I always say, you know, everything's secure until it's not, right? So if we recommend something today, who knows a year from now it, it gets exposed. So that's also something we really don't want to have to, you know, go back and comment or, you know, add something to every older post just to have a disclaimer that could get kind of time consuming. So um, I want to go back a bit to to the last back to the last pass breach and some information that they came out with on the blog post that they posted recently. Mm -hmm. They they make a claim that, uh, okay, it, it was breached and the vaults were breached, but it's going to take millions of years to crack this, so everybody is basically safe anyway, regardless of it being out there or not. Um, they use something, they use a technique to encrypt the passwords that you type your password into the system. It gets saved in their in their database somehow. Before being saved, they will apply an algorithm, a number of passes, a hundred and a hundred passes. 100,000 and 100 passes they claim to be doing. What this does is that you'll never have your password there so that the hacker is not actually trying your password against what's in the database to try to find it. They will have to try to not reverse it but reapply the same transformations to what gets fed there. There's a lot of mathematical functions applied here. It doesn't really matter. The thing is, the information that they store is not just your password encrypted. Is your password encrypted, but before being encrypted, it's modified. So that when you enter it again, they apply the same modification, and then they will compare the modified with what they are storing. The way that they make the claim that it's going to take millions of years to reverse is only true and only holds true if the password to begin with was complex enough and the requirements that they had at the time were not enough to to back up that claim um, they have now up the the character limit the minimum character limit for the passwords from the eight that they had at the time like i mentioned before to 12. that will give you some more time to crack the password even using this type of transformation but still that would would only hold true if the passwords were 
mathematically safe and nobody does passwords like that you will use something that it's easy to remember and if it's easy to remember it's probably part of a dictionary somewhere or part of the password is part of a dictionary somewhere so you reduce the entropy level there it's probably easier to crack than that that million years cra um, claim that they make that n will not hold true for 99 percent of the passwords that they have there and nope. The fact that they make that claim and they try to pass it as being secure, regardless of being out there in the open, that gives me some pause. Yeah, I mean, it gives me pause, too, because it depends on your thought experiment, how you think about this. Because is it true that it would take, you know, a long time for a threat actor to reverse engineer one of the passwords in the vault? Yeah, I would actually argue that it's infinitely secure. And here's why because no threat actor is going to bother. What they're going to do is try to, you know, get the master password. They're going to try to brute force that specifically before they try individual passwords, because if they can get that master password figured out, then they have all the passwords. They don't have to go through each and every single one of them. They could, they could brute force one thing to get access to all the other things. And if your password is super weak, as I'm, you know, as you just said, eight characters, um, it, it, I don't know if that's still the case, but if that's the, the lower end there, then there's going to be a lot of people with eight character passwords. Threat actor is going to, you know, try to brute force that. And then they're going to be successful for a certain subset of the users. And those passwords are now theirs. And they have each and every single one of them at that point. So um, it, it really does just depend on how you look at this. But then again, is there something that they're not telling us or something that they just haven't discovered yet? Because they did have a history of saying, yeah, this is what it is. And then later on, oh, no, by the way, also this. And then later on, oh, and that too. And then it just keeps changing. They keep having to update the blog post as they discover more and more things, refuting their own claims at some point. It's horrible. Yeah. And that's part of the reason why I, I had that comment about LastPass before. Um, regardless, uh, people will be interested in knowing what we are using. You already mentioned the ones that you are using. Me personally, for my own stuff, personally, Bitwarden with a local yep. deployment. Again, the stuff, get off my lawn. Um, either that or post-it notes, uh, but <laughs> Bitwarden locally. For enterprise stuff or enterprise deployment, it will I will have to look at the requirements of the specific environment to be able to give a, an advice on a, a password manager to use there. Depends right. a lot. The number of users, their skill level depends on the, the company level, depends on what types of systems that they are supposed to be accessing and the passwords that will be stored for those systems. Um, depends on, like you said before, if it requires setting those passwords on third-party applications or just through a web browser uh, depends a lot uh, the level of encryption that is required say for compliance reasons reasons you might have to store all the data encrypted according to a specific algorithm it might not be supported by some of the the systems that you are looking at um, and there are compliance stuff that requires that there's a lot of moving parts here for a given enterprise environment, it has to be on a case-by-case -case setting and the case-by-case -case decision. So um, I'll get into Bitwarden a bit in a minute because I do use that as well. Um, but I will just mention something that I liked about LastPass, actually, when I did manage a corporate um, implementation of this that was used company-wide. Um, and I think this is probably a feature that I would say any password manager probably should have if it's going to be used in the enterprise. And that is to be able to centrally control the passwords that the users have access to. So for example, you could have, let's just say hypothetically, an accounting group, a sales group, and then another group for this department and then that, that department. And if somebody you know, moves from one department to the next, you could just take them out of the group. They lose access to the passwords that belong to that group, and then you add them to the group that they're moving into. And you have that ability to, even at a password level, you can give people access to things, you could take it away. I think in an enterprise mindset, that's very important because you know if somebody turns in their two week notice, you have to be prepared to make sure that they have no access, um, You know, trust no one, right? To anything, any of the passwords, you have to be able to centrally control that if you have to manage it on a per installation basis, that gets to be annoying. And I think LastPass did that well when I used it back then. 
although I really didn't like the interface, but I would say that's probably a feature. Let me know if you agree that a lot of enterprise uh, companies out there is probably going to really want to have. <laughs> Absolutely. Some type of integration with an LDAP directory like Active oh, yeah. Directory, that's a must. So that you yep. can set up the all the privileges through the Active Directory groups and be able to remove them, like you said, and be able to terminate accounts or block accounts at the Active Directory uh, level and have that replicated throughout the, the enterprise, specifically to the password manager. Yeah, that's definitely something that has to be in your solution. That's something right. that you will need. Like I said before, you don't want to add complexity to your, to your environment. If you're adding a tool like this to simplify your security and to make sure that people comply with security regulations and security requirements, like having long passwords, they have to have the ability to store them. But you also need the ability to, to administer those users. Um, so you have to be able to manage the lifecycle and you don't want to have that done separately. Um, integrating it with Active Directory or some type of open LDAP directory service, that's definitely a must. Yep, absolutely agree. Now, getting back to Bitwarden, I use both KeePass XC and Bitwarden. There's some things that I just prefer to have on a local database that just doesn't need to be in the cloud. And then there's some convenience level things, like I brought up Steam, and every now and then I have to re-log into that. And I think it's very useful to have that password in KeePass XC. And I know that's not an enterprise thing, but we have to have some fun at the end of the day after work, right? But uh, just being able to log in to that locally, store the password locally, um, have you know some things in one, and the less sensitive things can be in Bitwarden. And so I basically just use a combination of both. But the only reason why I can do this is because I'm a one-person company. Would that scale how I do it to enterprises? No. Absolutely, it would not. And I also can't speak to Bitwarden's enterprise features on account of the fact that I don't have any employees. I'm only one person, so I'm not trying to lock myself out of anything here. <laughs> but one day when I do get employees, then obviously I'm going to have to look into this. So I can't speak to that. But what I can speak to is that Bitwarden checks all the boxes for me. I do enjoy it. But I'm not saying everybody should jump over to Bitwarden. You should do your research because uh, tomorrow I might not feel this way. And I think that's important to know that your application choices are going to change a lot during the course of your career. Whatever whatever you're using today for any uh, toward, you know sort of purpose might not be what you're using next month, next year. It's just going to keep changing. So I try not to get too attached to it because... Um, I know there's, there might have been people that were attached to LastPass, and now they're probably bummed out. But, but it, when all is said and done, you know, software projects go through different hands. There's different components and situations here. So I feel like you just got to keep a pulse on the industry, understand without what's out there, just keep your eyes on everything and just keep a pulse on it and be just be ready to react if you have to, just hoping that you never do, but just keep your eyes on things. And I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, that's closing remarks and trying to answer the, the question in the title. Should you trust password managers? Given the current environment and the, the security issues that we have, yeah, you do. You should trust password managers because currently it's the best thing that we have to keep our right. passwords secure. You shouldn't trust a specific password manager. And like you said, you should be able to move from one to the next if you're if the one that you're using is proven and secure. Um, but you should trust password managers because so far there isn't anything much better to keep your password secure. Yep. Again, it's not feasible to memorize all of them because every other site and just requires you to create an account or something like that. Um, if you don't have single sign-on or something, then you will have to store your passwords somewhere. And please don't do it in post-it notes. Please don't do it in the open. Don't use just a text file that you store in your desktop. Use the password manager. Again, it's the best thing that we have right now. It might change in the future. If something new comes along and something better comes along, we'll be sure to cover it. But yeah, trust password managers. Don't trust a specific password manager. Right. Right. I, I completely agree with that as well. And it's a shared responsibility model that I think you should always have. And this is something that, for example, AWS and maybe other cloud uh, providers out there will tell you. Uh, they'll provide you with a with an interface through which you could create a virtual machine or whatever. But it's up to you to install the updates. They're not going to do that for you. It's up to you to make sure that you have everything secured and ports closed. That's what a shared responsibility means in the context of cloud computing is that you know you have a responsibility in this too. And I think that's true of password managers as well. 
Because even the best password manager is just going to do no good if your password is ABC123. I mean, first of all, if they allow that password, that's another story. But, um, you know, needless to say, if your password is really, really bad, then, you know, it's a shared responsibility. You know, garbage in, garbage out. You have to be responsible and understand you need a long, randomly generated password. You know, just make sure that you're not making it too easy. But then again, there's going to be those people out there, and I'm sure it'll happen, you know, in the news. Big password breach at this company, and it's huge. And it ends up just being someone had uh, monkey123 as their password, and there was really no problem. But it makes for a good headline, so then it just gets news. And I'm sure that'll happen, but it is a shared responsibility model. You have to make sure that you make the right choices, too. A password manager by itself is not going to save the day. What you mentioned it's actually a feature already, but if it's not on the one that you're considering, then move on. It should have a complexity checker. It should alert yeah. you when your passwords are just too easy. Um, it should pop up and say, hey, are you really want to use ABC123 as your password? You're really dumb. So <laughs> if it said without, that, that would be another thing too. <laughs> with proper wording, yeah. of course. Yeah. But, but yeah, that is something that mo almost all of them, the, the ones that I've looked at, uh, actually implement something like that and rightly so um, again this there's a lot of password managers out there really a lot of them most of them you probably won't have heard of before go go past the first page of results in google and it's a notion of password managers out there there's bound to be a solution for your specific use case but um, don't get too attached to it. It might break really soon. It might break and you're going to have a bad day trying to change all your passwords because the, the password manager had an issue. But it's better than all the alternatives at the moment. And don't use a password manager that came out yesterday, please. You know, make sure you're using something that's actually been around for a while and, um, you know, isn't something that someone just came out with because and no offense to developers out there, but in the enterprise we have a different mindset about uh, whether we should trust something. I mean, what is it like 10 years has to prove itself? I'm not saying it, it has to prove itself for 10 years. When it comes to file systems on Linux, it does. You know, we're not gonna put a file system on a Linux server that's less than 10 years old. We don't have to go that far with password managers, but at least don't use one that came out yesterday. That would be a good place to start. <laughs> You're joking, but if you work in a bank, you don't deploy a Linux system unless it enters the long-term support phase. So that's at least five years right. after release. And that's a thing. So, yeah. yeah. Um, again, keep an eye out on password managers. Do use them. Don't use a specific one. Don't take our advice for a specific one. Find the one that meets right. your needs. And I guess that's all from us today. Yep. It was a pleasure as usual. Thank you, everybody who joined. And until the next one. Yep, we'll see you again. Bye.